Hi, my name is Anja Fenske, and I'm a product manager with Enroda and Schwarz. I support the whole power supply portfolio, and today I would like to talk to you about battery cell simulation for battery management system testing. But before we dive into the topic, I want to raise a very simple question. And this is, why do we actually simulate batteries? Why do we not just use the real ones for testing? To answer this question, we need to dive a little bit into the battery basics. So basically, there is four major chemistries for rechargeable batteries. There's lithium ion, which is the most common one. I think everyone has heard about lithium ion batteries. But there's um, a few more, some to name as nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, and lead acid. But all these different battery types have very different characteristics. So here in this graph, we see different battery types and their characteristics. We here have a graph that shows the different characteristics of different battery types. It has the power density over the energy density, and we can already see that different materials show very different, different behaviors. What kind of battery is the right battery for your product or your application depends highly on different factors. It can be how small or big your device is, so how many space you have for your battery, also how much money you can spend on the battery, and of course, most important, the battery life, so how long you want your battery to last. So here we already have one point where it's very important to decide which battery you want to use very early in your design process. So with battery simulation, you can try different types and see which one will work best with your product. So from the beginning to the end of the design process, battery simulation is really a key. Furthermore, there is a discharge and a charging curve to every battery. This curve is very individual for each battery cell, and it shows the open circuit voltage over the state of charge. And we can see that in the beginning, when the battery is fully charged, the open circuit voltage is quite high. So here we start with a AA type battery, it starts with 1.6. And during discharging of the battery, we end up at somewhere just below 1.2 volts when it's completely discharged. This is the other way around with the internal resistance. So the internal resistance gets higher with the battery being discharged. So capacity, open circuit voltage, and the internal resistance are very important battery characteristics that depend on the state of charge. So we cannot just use a normal power supply to supply your battery characteristics, but you need a power supply that can really simulate these real behaviors. But why do we do all of this, this whole different kind of batteries and different characteristics? One very important point is the battery lifetime. I think we all know that we want our cell phone to last for a long time. We want the battery to go through the day. We are used to it being charged every one or two days. So with the phone, we're here, we can yeah, charge it every few hours. Then when we look at smartwatches, we actually expect them to last a bit longer. We only want to charge them once a week or maybe even once a month. But then there's even other instruments where battery lifetime is very important. So to name one, there's park sensors. For park sensors, you really don't want to charge them or actually exchange them very often. So these park sensors, the batteries have to, la to last for sometimes even 10 years. So the reason for ba long battery life can be very different. Besides simply having a long operating life, the replacement costs to replace batteries can also be very high, or in some cases, very difficult to access if you think about, for example, medical devices. And then last but not least, of course, there is a lot of environmental issues with disposing batteries. But what do we actually need to analyze and optimize our battery lifetime? So there is a number of requirements that we need in a device to do these tasks. When we look at this graph, we have a IoT device that where we see here 
is in a sleep state where there is no data exchanged and the power consumption is very low. But then um, sometimes you have some signals and some, some data transfer going out. So the power consumption goes up all of a sudden and also goes up to quite a high point. This is why you need a very high dynamic range that you can measure from just a few nanoamps up to several amps. You also want to know it quite accurate because if you really want to optimize, you need to know exactly what the power consumption is at a specific point. You also need a nice time resolution because these switches can occur very fast. Within a few microseconds, it can go from a sleep state to a sending state. Then, of course, as we have discussed, you need to simulate different kind of batteries because not every device is working with the same battery type. And last but not least, you need several interfaces, just like digital inputs and outputs, to communicate with other devices. I wouldn't talk to you about all of this if I wouldn't have the perfect device for this. So let me introduce the NGM and NGU power supplies to you that we have in our portfolio, it's just pretty new. And they are the perfect fit for any kind of battery powered devices. This is due to different reasons. Most of them um, refer to the requirements that we have just discussed. Um, there's many features that these instruments have, but there's a few I would like to go a little deeper um, because they really refer to the requirements you have when simulating batteries. So obviously, of course, there's the battery simulation itself. Um, you also need to have a two quadrant operation so that you can not only source, but also sync current. You have a six and a half digit resolution, so you get quite accurate measurements. You have a fast load recovery time, a high speed data acquisition, and multiple measurement ranges to even measure those very low sleep currents. So let me start with building battery models with the NGM and NGU power supplies. So you first of all obviously need to create your battery model because you want your device to work exactly like a real battery. This can be done with different methods. So one is to just use the manufacturer's data and enter it in this predefined table. So you just use the data you get, you put that in, and after loading the battery model, the power supply will behave exactly like a real battery. We also have some default battery files that you can choose from, and you can just use those without having any data at hand. Another method that you can use is to use your real battery connect to the NGM, and then we have an application tool available that will completely discharge your battery, and out of this data will create the unique battery model to your battery. Once you have loaded the battery into the power supply, you will get this screen having all the different battery characteristics in one graphical interface. You see your battery capacity, you see your current limit, if it is discharging or charging, and of course you see your open circuit voltage and terminal voltage. You can always set the state of charge with just a click, so you can go from 89% to 5% only. If you're using a NGM202, it has two channels and therefore can also simulate two batteries at one time. The next point I want to talk to you is the source and sync operation. So usually a power supply is only there for sourcing. So we are moving only in one quadrant. But with the NGM and NGU power supplies, you actually get a two quadrant operation, which means that you can also sync current, which is very important if you're simulating rechargeable batteries because you need to um, to simulate the charging and the discharging. The NGM and NGU battery power supplies do that automatically. So once you go into sync mode, you will see this little minus appearing here. Of course, you can also set them to sync only mode or source only mode. The next point is the six and a half digit resolution. This is very important when you're characterizing devices that have low standby power consumption and quite high peaks when they're in full load operation. This is, for example, with IoT devices, also cell phones. The way resolution works is kind of like what you can see in these pictures. If you have a low resolution, you can kind of see that this is a dog, but you cannot see any details. 
the higher the resolution gets, the more details you can really see. And this is the same with power supplies. If you have low resolution, you can say if you're measuring one amp or if you're measuring 1.1 amp, but you cannot really distinguish between nanoamps, picoamps, or microamps. So this is when you're characterizing power consumption, even in these little sleep modes, you need a really high resolution. This is also really handy because it replaces a additional multimeter and you will save a lot of costs and also space on your bench. Another really important factor is the load recovery time. The NGM and NGU power supplies offer a load recovery time of less than 30 microseconds, which is best in its class. But why is this really important? When we look at a cell phone or a IoT device, you are remaining in sleep mode for a while, and then all of a sudden, very fast, you want to receive a text or you want to get a call, and this happens very fast within microseconds. So all of a sudden, your current consumption jumps up. And usually with power supplies, this is the moment where the power supply voltage drops, and then it tries to regulate itself, and therefore you have a quite big overshoot, and then it takes a long time until the set voltage is back to where you want it to be. This is different with the NGM and NGU power supplies. You only get a small drop, there's no overshoot, even during challenging load changes, and after those less than 30 microseconds, you are back to your set voltage. So this is really important and perfect when you're testing IoT and battery-powered devices. The next thing is the high-speed data acquisition. With the NGM and NGU power supplies, we can sample with up to 500,000 kilo samples per second. That means that you will get a voltage and current value every two microseconds. But why is this really important? When we have a look at this graph, you see a standard power supply in the orange. It samples, let's say, a few times per second, and what you are missing is very short but high current spikes. With the NGM and NGU sampling every two microseconds, you will get every drop and every peak, and you will get the real power consumption of your device. Another thing was that you need to characterize those very small sleep currents as well as currents that might have several amps. So here it helps that we have multiple measurement ranges within the NGM and NGU that make sure that you get accurate measurements in the area of several amps, but also in those very small sleep currents. The NGM has four current measurement ranges and gives you a resolution down to 10 nanoamps. And the NGU is even a bit more accurate with six ranges and a resolution down to 100 picoamps. Last but not least, we have various interfaces on the NGM and NGU that makes it very easy to talk to other instruments or to connect to some kind of software or PC. So there is digital inputs and outputs, there is USB, Ethernet, um, Wi-Fi, and if you need it, also GPIB. So now we have an instrument that is perfect to simulate battery cells. But in reality, we usually do not use individual battery cells. In the real world, they are combined to battery packs or modules. For example, the Tesla Model S has 7,104 individual battery cells that are organized in 16 battery packs. But of course, we need to make sure that these individual battery cells work together as a system. It is required to actively monitor, control, and manage various battery cell parameters. These are, for example, voltage and current, the thermal and energy management, but also the cell balancing, the state of charge, or the state of health of the battery cells. These tasks are taken over by a battery management system, also called BMS. You can kind of think about a battery management system making a battery smart. So whenever your cell phone tells you that you're running out of battery or tells you how far you can go with your Tesla, this is always communicated by the battery management system and not the cell itself, because the cell itself is pretty dumb. Actually, all lithium-ion batteries require a battery management system. This is due because if you overcharge or completely discharge a lithium-ion battery, it will fail. 
So it has a very specific operating and also temperature window it needs to be operated in. And this is where you need to program your battery management system accordingly. A typical BMS consists of one or more cell monitoring controller and one battery management controller. To these CMCs, you then connect your battery modules. So a test system would kind of look like this. The monitoring, controlling, and managing of these individual battery cells is the greatest challenge when developing and validating battery management systems. As a BMS supplier, you're responsible for the complete system validation and to make sure that the BMS is behaving in the correct way. At the end, this is also a safety concern. There are several tests that you have to perform as a BMS supplier. Here, I've just listed a few of them. You need to do cell balancing tests to make sure all batteries go back to the same state of charge when they vary. You need to do aging tests where you do continuous change of voltages on each individual cell. There's mission profiles where you do customized simulation of different scenarios depending on your application. And of course, there's error simulations where you do over-voltage and under-voltage tests. And you have to set these voltages very fast, usually within less than 10 milliseconds. You also need to make sure that all cells are set at the same time. For this, we have used a test setup with multiple NGM power supplies. So if you remember from the picture before, we had connected our battery packs to the battery management system. Here we use our power supplies connected to the BMS to use each power supply output as one individual battery cell. So instead of using the real batteries where it's very hard to get the specific state of charge or the specific voltage that you need to test at that time, you're using power supplies where you can individually control and manage each battery cell. Here we see eight NGM power supplies put in a test rack. With its 16 outputs, you can simulate 16 individual battery cells. This was actually done for a 48 volt system. With this solution, you can support every step in your battery management system development, starting from the research and development phase up to production tests. One of the really big plus of this is that it's highly flexible and absolutely scalable to the needed number of cells. If you need more or less cells, you can just remove power supplies or add them later on. Also, if you don't need your system anymore, you can take the power supplies out and use them as a usual benchtop power supply. Another very big advantage is that you have one individual output per battery cell. This means that you can also control every cell individually. That means you can set up a predefined or programmable cell model that we have discussed earlier during battery cell simulation, and you can control and monitor each battery cell parameter in real time. This is the open circuit voltage and the terminal voltage, the charge and discharge current, the state of charge, and also the internal resistance. We also offer a very fast regulation of the output impedance. It's adjustable from minus 50 milliohm up to 100 ohm. Also, the fast data acquisition of 500 kilo samples per second offers a very in-depth analysis and documentation for optimization. With the digital inputs and outputs, we ensure that all battery cells are set synchronous and very fast. If this is interesting for you and you need a little more information, you can go to our website and find additional information. There is a BMS testing article in our news magazine. We have a app card describing how this all works. And of course, you will find the data sheet of the NGN and the NGU to get the technical data. So I hope you learned something new today in this presentation. And I will be very happy to answer remaining questions. For that, please use the chat function. Thank you very much.